Okay, so we are going to start. Um, good afternoon from Photo Photo Gallery. I'm Pamela Waldrop, president of our photographic collective, and I'm very excited to welcome you to our Zoom reception, live from our newly expanded gallery. This is actually just our second live Zoom from our gallery, so uh, we're we're uh, we're excited. Um, this morning, as I was checking my Facebook page, uh, I actually got goosebumps. It was exactly one year ago today that I made the following post on our photo photo gallery Facebook page. Quote, due to the expanding threat posed by the coronavirus, photo photo gallery in downtown Huntington Village will be temporarily closed to the public until further notice, unquote. We were closed for five months. And during that five months, our 2020 Your Best Shot Pushpin exhibition remained up. Two solo exhibitions happened online on our Photo Photo Gallery website. We revisited past shows and receptions through Facebook and Instagram posts. And in August, we expanded our gallery to double its size. I feel, I know our members feel that art and photography are essential to our souls, to Huntington, and to Long Island. Photo, go, photo Photo Gallery has not only persevered, we have grown and are now thrilled to have photographic works by Tony Monaco and Susan Tiffin featured in their solo exhibitions, Your Best Shot Winners. Last year, images by Tony and Susan were chosen from 141 photographs submitted by 56 artists in our 2020 Your Best Shot Pushpin Exhibition. By the way, this year's Pushpin Exhibition will happen in April, so be sure to check our website and our Facebook pages for the prospectus. Congratulations to Tony and Susan on your fabulous exhibitions, and thank you both for joining us here at Photo Photo Gallery to discuss your work in the show. Now, before we continue, a little uh, little commercial here and a little disclaimer, um, just to let you know that videos are property of Photo Photo Gallery. No recording of, of screenshots, please, or screenshots, please. Uh, we're happy to say that an edited version of our Zoom reception will be available very shortly on YouTube channel, not long after this. Uh, links will be posted on our website, on Instagram, and the Facebook pages. I ask you please to kindly mute your microphones. We will have a question and answer session after the artists discuss their works. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, at that time, just um, raise your hand, please, if you'd like to comment or ask a question. And also don't forget about our chat. Love to hear um, feedback in the chat. If you have any questions along the way, uh, please do that. So we are happy to be uh, doing a little hybrid model here. We're, uh, which is like a, the new word. We're, we are here live in, this, in our gallery uh, with Susan Tiffin and Tony Monaco is um, going to be zooming from his apartment in New York City. So we're gonna um, start off with just hearing a little bit about, um, each artist's background. And uh, Tony, would you like to hop in here first and tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, Pamela, first of all, thank you and Paul for facilitating such a wonderful show. You know, we worked together this weekend, hanging it, it. The amount of work that goes into it and the amount of energy that you and Paul have is just incredible. Uh, thank you so much for that, for helping me in the way that you did. Uh, so I'm a New York City photographer based out of Manhattan. And I'm zooming from, uh, not my apartment, though I wish it was, I'm zooming from the uh, amenity space of the Barbizon Hotel, where I live and work for approximately the last 20 years. And uh, a little advertisement here, a fifth book was just written about the Barbizon from Paul Lee the Bren, and wonderful book, selling very well, yes. Uh, so, yeah, so although photography isn't my profession, I'm general manager of this hotel, I, uh, 
I really enjoy it. And I especially enjoy doing image transfers, which is what my show is about. Uh, in my show, there are 12 pieces. Each one is done with a, uh, a different, either an image slide, an image transfer, inks, distracts, oxides, and things of that nature. We'll get into it later. But um, so that's where I am right now. Just- uh, Okay, thanks. I know we're gonna get in a lot more in depth uh, when we continue our conversation. So thank you. Uh, Susan, um, could you please tell us a little bit about your background? Um, I started by saying thank you, all my friends and family that showed up today. I really appreciate it. Um, I am thrilled to have my artwork showing with um, Tony Monaco, whose work is just wonderful. Um, my background, um, I grew up in a family uh, very photography oriented. In 1938, my father and another gentleman started a company called Entico. My father went off to World War II, came back, and then um, started Tiffin with his brothers. Uh, that's a filter company, which I am no longer connected to in any way. <laughs> um, and, but I did grow up in a house full of artwork and photography. I always had a brownie and eventually a much nicer camera, although I had no idea it was a much nicer camera. Um, and, uh, but I wanted to be an artist. So photography was not, you know, what I wanted. I went to art school. I went to Tyler, the art school of Temple University. I raised a family. I have two wonderful sons and, and grandchildren, lots of grandchildren. And, um, while I was working, well, further back, I, I had a wallpaper design business in Huntington. I had my own line of wallpaper that uh, sold nationally. After the internet started, I left that, um, was doing trade shows and somebody stole my camera and I got a digital camera and I was already using all the Adobe products and that was it. Photography was my art, my expression. I really became obsessed with it. So that it's about 20 years ago now. Susan, I know you have quite a varied background, actually. Uh, I was privileged to see one of your shows at a, a huge library show, and I was actually quite surprised to see how and varied and extensive your background is. Well, I was very lucky. I, I went to a wonderful high school on Long Island. I did lithography in the stone. We did silk screen. We did acid etchings. We did everything. My teacher, Vigo Matson, was just wonderful. Um, and then my parents were very encouraging. I had private art lessons. Um, and while I was in art school, I, in the summer, I went to um, CW Post and took a sculpture class with, with uh, Alfred Van Lowen, which was really quite an experience. And um, took painting at uh, the new school, took classes yeah. there. So I, I did everything. And I really was, when I first went to school, a potter. I was a, I was a ceramist and um, I did everything because it was a basic art education. You had to do everything and um, it, it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's something that you always have and that's pretty much my background. I'm going to jump back to you for a minute, Tony, because I know you also have a background in teaching and uh, can you share a little bit about that with us? All the time. Okay, so yes, yeah, so, so I do have a teaching background. Um, I had two photo studios in the 90s, and, um, and I loved it, really, you know, made a living off it for a while, very good living, but I decided that I really, my, my passion was teaching. I went into that, toured for about 12 years. I would make uh, you know, an appearance at Visual Arts on occasion, do some teaching there, but mainly taught the art labs uh, on Staten Island, Snug Harbor, which I really enjoyed. I taught advanced lighting. I taught printing, post-processing, which is my background, where I come from. Uh, out of high school, I worked for, for a fashion photographer, printing for uh, magazines, and, uh, and loved it ever since. I think that's why my work tends to lean toward uh, gothic grunge using uh, gel plates and acrylic paints and dioxide paints and uh, things of that nature to create what my show is now. It's terrific. It's terrific. It, it's, I'm finding it really interesting to see actually how much uh, you, the two of you have in common in your background as well. 
Um, okay, so let's let's start to actually hear about the work. Um, Susan, would would you like to start and talking about your work? I was thank you, uh, Pam. I was walking on um, the boardwalk uh, at Jones Beach with a friend, and um, you know you you take pictures, and I really. I'm one of those people, I don't necessarily know that I have the image or exactly what I have until I open it up in the um, computer. And I loved it. I loved it. So, you know, there it is. This image has a very noir feeling about it. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm curious as I'm looking at the image again, I mean, the lighting is just spectacular. Um, can, while we're looking at the images, can you tell us just a little bit about your editing process or what your goals are while, while we're looking at some of the images, but particularly this one, it's a beauty. Well, I, you know, the editing process is I, I, I pull everything into the computer in Lightroom. Um, I, um, I, I do some basic camera, I shoot in camera raw, I do some basic edit, editing. And then I've been doing Photoshop for so many years that I really process in Photoshop. I just, you know, I don't see any reason um, not to. With I need the layers. I, I it gives me much more opportunity to get what I want. And I'm looking for impact. I'm looking for a mood. And yes, this really was film noir. The woman who's walking in front of me said, oh my God, I look fat. And I said, oh no, you don't. You look like Marilyn Monroe. You know, um, the, the movement, her hair, all of that. So. Um, now, speaking of movement, uh, when you and I were looking at this image in the gallery, I, I, what speaks to me particularly, and for some reason seems to just, it, it sets a certain, timing of the image a mood and that is that right foot yes yeah and i would love to say all of this was planned but it wasn't <laughs> well, the planning comes from years of experience and knowing what to do when the opportunity presents itself and you did that here and you did it beautifully right i mean but, now one of the thing one of my goals is to get a new camera and i I, I'm going to keep it light because I really, well, the phones are good. Now you can use the phone, but, um, you know, there's no replacement for having the camera with you always. What, what's the title of this image again, Susan? Um, what it's, um, boardwalk. Was this boardwalk, babe? Bo boardwalk, babe. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. I thought so, which is very different from the next one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a story with this. I had always called this subway girl and um, I was using Scott Farrell to print. I, I always print myself, but they've, they've discontinued the ink. Epson discontinued the ink for the 2200, so I didn't print. And I, I, I said, um, you know, it's, it's subway girl and he said well you know it's the long island railroad and why don't you call it stalker because there's that shadow of a man there so it is now called stalker <laughs> which was not my intent i did not know that man was there again until i put it in you know i, I pulled it into the computer and um and i just i like the whole feeling of this the isolation to me it's very much covid and pandemic you know, there's so few people, although this was pre, um, this was maybe uh, six months, a year before pandemic that I took the photograph. One of the things that I find delightfully prevalent when I looked at your collection of images in the gallery is a sense of ambiguity. And I, I have a feeling that's part of your goal and what you are hoping to get from the viewer. Well, it's interesting because I never realized until I stood in the gallery and looked at my pictures that other than one of them, you don't see any faces. Everybody's walking away or looking away from me. And I do like that because if she, you know, it's a whole other feel when someone is facing you, you know, you're wondering who they are. Can you see their face clearly? You know, uh, it's, a, it's just a different feel to it. And I like that. Where is she going? What is she doing? You know, what is she carrying? Um, I, I like that. 
Well, and your perspective works so beautifully here to not only uh, focus us in on her, but to you know travel around and discover all the other wonderful things that are happening in the image as well. Uh, I, I was wondering about this image and the first one as we move on to the third one, uh -huh. uh, which, uh, <laughs> let's see, this is, um, is this called Wash? Yes, um, I was in Cold Spring Harbor. That's the, um, I forget what they call it, wh when you, you're putting the boat into the water, the boat uh, Oh, ramp. to launch the boat? Yeah, it's the boat launch there. And I saw this man, I didn't know what he was doing. He just looked interesting and the texture of the water, you know, the play of light against the water, against the texture of the boat ramp, I, I really liked. And then when I put it in the computer and I, you know, I, I pulled it up and I, and I looked at it, he's washing his shoe is what he's doing. Wow. I mean, I never spoke to him. I never approached him. I just took the picture, you know. And that's what he's doing. He's he, if you look very closely, you might be able to see he's got one shoe on and one shoe off. So that's you know I I know that you shoot, um, well, or you print. You uh, your final pieces are both wonderful uh, color as well as black and white. Now, what was there about this particular series of black and white images that? made you decide that you wanted to stay with the black and white? Um, I think in black and white, they become much more graphic. You know, the elements become, um, you know, the play of light and dark, the play of positive and negative space, the subject stands out more. And I, I just, I liked it. As some of these things, I had never printed this one before. I, I never printed this this photograph, and um, you know I play. I'm sure, as many of us do, I have about you know four or five different versions of this color or black and black and white. And the color in this was interesting, but nothing spectacular. It's a much stronger image in black and white. So I, that I was my Personally, I feel like this image in black and white really gives you a chance to uh, enjoy all the linear aspects of it. It's it's nicely done, very nicely Thank done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, N You're not my usual, but people aren't my usual uh, photographs, you know, other than my family. And this one, um, I was in the city. In fact, I think I was coming out of Soho Gallery in the city. And I caught this and, um, you know, it's interesting because I am a member of, of some photography groups, um, Long Island Center of Photography, um, the Photo Club of Long Island, which is a Port Washington group and um, Huntington Camera Club. And this is not a, a camera club shot. They don't like this. It's got the lines um, in front of what's, you know, the man. Um, but I love it. I just, I caught a moment and I really like it. And again, it's, it's, it was nighttime. So black and white, of course, fits and it's very graphic. Yes. A beautiful so use like of it. negative space, stark contrast. Uh, I love that subtle play of light in the uh, lower right hand corner. Um, Thank you. It's beautifully done. I'm just looking here. Was this, um, what, at North? More? One North. Um, now I don't, I, you know, I'm one north. Is it, this is uh, a, the, a location. Well, that's the street address. Okay. If okay. It, if you could see the writing on the um, on the door, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to your your next image, um, Wolf's Beach. Yes. Oh, tell us about yeah. this one. I, I, this is uh, I love the mood in this shot. Thank you. Actually, I, um, this I've printed many times in color and I love it in color, but I, again, this fit the theme of what I was doing. So I printed it black and white. Um, and, you know, uh, again, in black and white, it's the elements of the, the benches and the man, you know, looking off into the water. And uh, it's funny, as I look through my, 
my photographs when I go back and look, I have a lot of empty beaches. <laughs> Not necessarily with people, but I, I really like this. I'm and wondering, I'm wondering as um, I look at your images again, um, if there are any particular influences in your background, photographers, events that uh, inform the way that you shoot this particular series. Um, not this particular series, you know, my background is fine art as I mentioned, and um, a very big influence was my high school art teacher, Viggo Hall Matson, who was a graphic artist. And um, he was a big influence on me. Um, as far as photography, I, I fell in love with a couple of flower photographers, but I look at everything. Um, and, you know, I don't have my notes in front of me, so I'll probably get things wrong, but um, there's some, the, um, well, of course, Cartier-Bresson, the, the moment, mm -hmm. and all of these are a moment. Um, you know, Stieglitz and his clouds. I mean, there's so many that I love, I, I couldn't even go into it. And these days I love, um, I believe his name is Bruce Leitner, the um they're kind of abstract um impressionist photographs uh they're just beautiful and their color but uh, again i i've looked at so many photographers your next image is is very different i know yes. this is your granddaughter and yeah. uh, i want to ask you a specific question about this shot mm -hmm. this one is cropped very differently than all the rest why? Yeah. Um, it fit the image. It fit the image. It, it you know, the positive and negative, um, drawing you into her face, the position of her hand. Um, it just, this was a, a grab shot. You know, we're, we're, I'm at my son and daughter-in-law's house and took a picture of her, her name's Corinne, which is the name of the picture. And um, actually I almost left this one in color because it's all browns and beiges. And it's, it's got a very rich tone in it, but I did convert it to black and white. So it's just, it's the positive and negative space worked well the way it is. So it's, it's actually not cropped that much. I didn't have the top of her head, you know? I didn't have that, uh, that right side is the way that I took the picture. Okay, I'm, I'm so. actually, when I use the word crop, uh, I I don't crop a lot of my own images when I edit, mm -hmm. but I think of cropping right. in terms of what I see when I'm either looking at the through the viewfinder or you know if I'm using a another device uh, that that's when I'm doing my cropping. Yeah. I firmly believe that when we show an image, it's not just about the image, and and I find this particularly true of this image. It's also about ourselves as photographers because. Yeah. The way my feeling is that this image very much is an intimate image mm. and, and it says much about your relationship with her. Right. Well, and this is very different than the rest of them, which are not intimate at all. You know, there are people with their back to the camera moving away in one form or another. Um, and I have to say, I tend to overshoot in general, depending on what it is, I overshoot because I know I can edit, mm -hmm. you know, and I want to make sure to get in everything, you know, and leave space and, and all that stuff. It wasn't the case with this one, but that's what I tend to do is overshoot, you know, oversized. I, of course, I'm lining it up and I'm paying attention to what's in and what's not in the, the photograph, but, you know, that's my tendency to overshoot. Um, we're very fortunate in the gallery to have not only your black and white series, but also uh, a series of images that you are actually very well known for, and that is your florals. So please speak to us about your florals. There are, hmm, what are there, about nine images, and yeah, uh, yeah tell us about this, please. Well, this, this particular series that you're going to see with the, the white anemone, um, I think they're anemone, um, is a garden that I go back to all the time and I love. 
And my, con my, my goal was to give the feeling of a garden, not just, very often I'll isolate images, um, but I wanted very particularly to um, have the flower stand out, but the feeling of this garden. And I, I think it, it's worked well with these. Um, and if you do see them in, in the gallery, you'll see they're small. You've got to lean in to see them and they're grouped. And that was my idea to get the effect of, of a garden. But I, I, love, I love flowers. I, I, I went from a house with a, a huge, you know, area to plant in to um, a co-op apartment where they do let me plant. In fact, I've ordered a whole bunch of hellebore and anemone and hopefully they'll come, you know, next month. Um, then the gardeners, using the term loosely, come around and kill them all. So we'll see, see what happens. But um, no, I, I very particularly took color out, um, just that hit of the orange. And um, yeah, I, I just wanted to show off the one flower. You know, that's... Uh, As we look at some other images in this series, uh, one of the things I find particularly stunning is the, not only the, um, you know, specified use of color, but your depth of field is very mm -hmm. shallow depth of field. And I, how much of that is in camera and how much of that is part of your editing process? Well, I shoot an aperture priority for these. And um, depending on, I'm sorry about that. Let me get rid of this. Um, I shoot an aperture priority and, and I do take them into Photoshop and depending on the image, I mean, this had a very dark background, dark leaves, dark, and I did work on it, you know. Um, but I, I, knew, I knew my intent with this series. So um, I, I, you know, I achieved it, I, I think. The, uh, Again, this, this, is, this is not a, you know, if you're gonna, I, I tell some of the people I, I, I help in the camera clubs that, you know, the camera club isn't the real world. Camera, uh, this, this I put into a competition and the judge's comment was, well, could you, next, you know, can you go back and take it so that that stem is not going through the middle of the flower? Well, come on, it's a garden. That's the way it was, you know. Um, yes, uh, and, uh, composition is always uh, an interesting topic in, in, in any, any situation. Right. Uh, but uh, the, uh, obviously the, the use of aperture priority works very beautifully for you. You mentioned a word that I always like to discuss with um, artists. Uh, whether it's in painting or photography or anything, and that's intent. Um, yeah. When you're shooting a series, um, do you usually, are, are your intentions pretty clear from the beginning or, or does it sometimes just unfold? Um, when I looked at this series of images, um, I, I got a much clearer idea of what I wanted to do. I very often desaturate, so that you know, I don't like overdone, oversaturated photographs. I mean, I, people do beautiful sunsets. I love them. I'm not interested in seeing another oversaturated sunset, to tell you the truth. And I, it doesn't have the feeling I want. I want more of, um, let you figure out your emotional connection to the picture, your interpretation. You know, one of my favorite quotes is from, Elliot Erwitt, you take photographs so you don't have to talk about photographs and words, mm -hmm. something along that line. Um, and I knew my intent with these pictures. I knew I wanted the white flowers. I didn't know that I would create this, gar what I consider a garden look. I wasn't positive on that. Because when you get to the other, some of the other pictures I did, they're very much isolated you know, flowers. As we look, I think there are uh, two more in this series before we mm -hmm. see the, the group. Um, 
another thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, I know these these are very popular with uh, your collectors. They love these. What do you <laughs> yes. think there is about these that is so appealing? Well, you know, I have a background in, in interior design. I did that for years and years and years. And, and, you know, these, if you like the feeling and you like the mood of it, it can fit in in many places, you know. And it's it's the um, the quiet beauty, if I can put it that way. Quiet, you know. They're they're quiet. They're not gonna overwhelm. But you know, it's it's if you really like it, it's something that makes you happy. You know, it gives you a certain feeling, which is always with an image. You know what I'm trying to do: create a, a mood, a feeling. They're very eloquent, very nicely done. Thank you. Thank um, you. I mean, I, I I'm I'm very happy the, with the way this series turned out. I think we have two more in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this one, um, and I do have these, and uh, I can do these in different sizes if anyone is interested in purchasing, you know, an image. Um, and I was very flattered. An artist friend of mine bought this one, which thrilled me to death. Um, from previous, she had seen it and she liked it. But again, this is, you know, I, I just, you know, it's, it, I do things I love and I love the flowers. Congratulations. I think there's one more single image. Yeah. I had to work on that one a lot. I don't know if it's finished really, <laughs> but, um, yeah. And I, again, it's the feeling of, of a flower. I, I, I particularly love the feeling of, of emergence. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, beautifully done. And I think next we have uh, a shot of the collection of those. Oh, uh, no, this is, this is oh, no, my... per, Okay, perhaps it's at the end of uh, okay. the series that we have. Okay, um, these are magnificent. So please tell us all about the, the series. Well, this is more of my usual flower shots, you know, individual, um, large individual flowers. And I and um, always printed on matte at a very high DPI. Um, I like that velvety, almost painter-like quality. And, um, you know, this is, these next three are my COVID really pictures because during the pandemic, I really wasn't going anywhere. So I walked around my community or the local area and I took pictures and this is one of them. This is a high, there's all different kinds of lace cap hydrangeas growing out front. And this is one of them. I love the little blue spikes. They actually sparkle, you know, um, it's, it's a great plant. Let's hope the quote unquote gardeners don't kill it. <laughs> Could you speak to the size of these images also as compared to the rest of your work in the gallery? Oh, well, these, um, this is uh, matted and framed. This is probably about 20 by 24, something like that. And um, I like square formats and those are, are framed to 20 by 20. I mean, I like big, I, I could even do it bigger, you know, um, but um I, I also, I can do them small. Someone has asked me if I can print, if I have, you know, small versions and I do. So wonderful. That's a possibility. I know. Yeah, I, and I think this is a hosta, but I couldn't swear to it. it it's across the like street it. if you want to see it. <laughs> I love the name of this one, uh, Lavender Drama. And it is actually currently on our Facebook page where, uh, our Facebook followers can also find your artist statement. Uh, so yes, tell us more about this one. This one's handled a little differently than the others. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I, I did intensify the the purple a little bit as, as opposed to taking color out of things. But again, it's a feeling, it's, you know, a mystery. Um, and I mean, it's an ordinary flower in your garden, but I, I try and one of my big goals is to have you look at things in the way that I would like them to be, the way I see them, you know, my, my drama. Well, one of the quotes that 
I can't think of exactly right now, but I love to use in my own work when I photograph and I, I get the feeling we share this is that my images are not as much about what they really look like as they are about the feeling that I'm trying to yes. create, of, 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 get, you know, created by the image. Yes. Um, I know there's one more in this series. I believe it's called Red Hydrangea. Right. This is my COVID shot, really. You know, you start looking at things differently. Um, I mean, what's beautiful? A perfect flower can be beautiful, but an imperfect, you know, this one's fading. And it it's, um, at times I call it my COVID red-edged hydrangea. You know, it, it was fading. It's, it was starting to lose its, its flowers, but I really liked it. So it's it to me it's interesting and it has a beauty of its own you know not a classic beauty where do you see yourself going um uh, with this oh excuse me i i'm i'm glad we have this one to look at too because uh this gives for me almost a, a feeling of a garden if you'd like to speak about the arrangement here yeah i very particularly did white frames because i i felt that the images called for it and I, I wanted that grouping, that feeling of, of these are all related. These are all from the same garden, which they are. So that's, and thank you, Pam, for hanging it this way, you know. Uh, well, it works out beautifully. And there's a nice flow between your black and white images into uh, these garden uh, images and onto your very vibrant, um, larger, shots that you've discussed as well uh, again it's a stunning stunning show uh as as always you know uh the images the digital images are beautiful but nothing compared to coming into the gallery so i hope that people will be coming into the gallery to see your show too Thank um, you. i yeah. i really enjoyed hearing you talk about them in detail so thanks very much for uh sharing your insight and your um, and a little bit about your equipment and your influences. Okay, let's see. Tony? Yes. Can you hear me? There you are. I love your voice. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as I was saying before, before I move on, I just want to tell Susan that her show is incredible and uh, it's going to be a hard act for me to follow. But here it goes. <laughs> so this is a direct image transfer. Uh, this is a laser jet printer and on a canvas board. And... I took this image probably at the height of the pandemic when we were losing about 900 people a day in New York City. And I wanted to memorialize this uh, horrific event. And I thought so by doing it with this model, Elena. And she was wonderful. And I, I think it worked out great. And it's a, this is a composite of gels and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. But this is, uh, this is, what, this is what came out of the project. It's, uh, it's framed in a uh, Vatican frame. It's this person from California who makes these custom made frames. And this is a tabernacle frame with 22 karat gold. And this, this frame, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here, Tony, uh, just, just for our viewers. Um, it's 20 inches high by 21 inches wide. Uh, it is uh, quite impressive. Thank you. Uh, we, we, you want to move on to our, our your, sure. your, your second yeah, one? Okay, thank you. So, number two. Right, so this image is a, uh, this is an alcohol gel image. Again, you know, subject matter is very important and uh, Susan's work displays it wonderfully. Uh, I'm not saying that my subject matter is uh, it is up there as much, but it's, again, my show was to show, I wanted the viewer to see what they could do with a single photograph. If we were to take the same photograph and make 12 images from it, they will all look different. So that was the purpose of this show. And this is an alcohol gel done on an overhead uh, projection film and transferred onto Archer's paper. So we that's- are going, We are uh, going to want you to do a workshop for us. So, so these, so these are these. This is done with uh, with uh, inks, and there's some uh, dis distress oxide in there. And there's also layers. If you look closely by the columns in the back, 
There are like these circles, if you could see them. So these are multiple layers. Hey, I have, Tony, I have a question as I'm looking at your images. Uh, if you could speak to a little bit about, um, oh, you know, there's, there's, there's always a working relationship between the photographer and the models. Like, it, was this a photo shoot that was set up? Was this something that you did lots of? How much of the model, uh, how much did the model have to do with it? Can, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Well, this particular shoot was done actually in Williamsburg, and it was a photo shoot. I belong to uh, several photo clubs, and this is basically you pack your camera up, you go there, you give it 100 bucks, 120 bucks, whatever it is, and you're shooting for three hours. So there are several models there, and, and this one, I guess I gravitated toward her. Um, I, I thought she worked perfectly for what my image was. Again, my work tends to go toward the, uh, the grunge, gothic look. Um, so... So we had a nice session, her and I, you know, just with her for 20 minutes. I shot a, a bunch of images. I, I like this one. I thought it was just perfect. And uh, and that's where it took me, right here. I love, I, I love the edges, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the contrast between the edges and the crisp detail in her face and, and her attire. Uh, beautiful. Right, so these edges, are, these edges can either be hand painted and put into Photoshop. You can make them yourselves, which I've done on many occasions, or Photoshop has some edges, but you still have to know how to float the image. If you look closely, you'll see that the image is floating on the black. So again, that's layers. So there's multiple layers. Could be 12 layers on it. So I'm not really sure. I have to go back to the file. Okay, uh, let's see your, uh, your third image. Right, so this image is actually photographs where I'm sitting now at the Barbizon Hotel. It's a banquette. It's to my left from where I'm sitting. And this is a, uh, this is overhead transparency film with gold leafing behind it. Again, very, very intricate. The file for this is, is huge. It's probably 37 layers, I think this one was. Uh, though the banquette doesn't look as that is as many backgrounds added, and then there's highlighters put into the light and turn the light switches on. And then uh, this model, uh, she she's a wonderful model, I've been working with her for years. And uh, she she's an animal lover, she loves cats, she loves masks, she loves these things. And, uh, um, so we, this, we put this together and it just worked out great. This particular piece, um, folks, if you get a chance to come to Huntington and see this show, you absolutely have to, to see both Susan's work and Tony's work. And in this particular piece, you can, uh, the, the brush strokes are so rich across the, the surface of this. Can you tell um, what, what creates that, that visible texture, that pull across the image? Right, so, the, so the, what's creating that texture is behind that image there is uh, imitation gold leafing. I, I, don't, I don't often use real gold leafing because I feel it's not as vibrant as the imitation gold leafing. So in this particular image, this is again, overhead the transparency films and um, with the imitation gold leafing behind it, which gives it that warm glow. And also when these images are created, they're, they're saved in uh, PNGs so that some portions of the file is translucent and others aren't. And oh. that's what gives it the wave. So. Yeah. How's pretty, that done? Pretty, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's another whole that's conversation. A, but yeah, anyway, that's I, another conversation. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. So, so, uh, so what you do is when you're when the files actually starts from a photograph, you can white out the the sections of the file that you want to be transparent, and you do that by unlocking the image, the original image. You must unlock it, and then you have to use a pick tool. And pick out what you want and then when you save it in a png it's going to show a gray white grid behind it mm -hmm, but right. when you print it out on the overhead track uh, on the projection film you're going to see just complete transparency whatever you put behind it you'll see it so of course i, I knocked out the uh, lamps so that when i put the gold behind it they would pop like it does this is very similar to a traditional printmaking process Oh, oh, certainly, yeah. Absolutely, I, what you're I, describing. Pretty much uh, the same print makeup. I, I see that in your next image, um, called Jan Marie, number four, uh, yeah. it's also an imitation gold leaf on transparency film. Same same thing, just a close up. Right? We just, uh, it's just, just two views, horizontal, vertical. This one has a little French writing in the back, if you notice it on the wall. Again, mm -hmm. with a bunch of layers. layers. Uh, some of them I make, some of them I, you know, I just pick, pick off. Uh, 
on a, uh, not, not so much the internet, but there is a, uh, it's called, it's, uh, if anyone uses it, it's called Ferry, uh, Graphic Ferry. Uh, so it's a wonderful internet. You can go to it, it has some great images. And if you become a member, you could use some of the backgrounds. I also purchase backgrounds and I also make my own. Most of them I make, some I purchase. I don't know how to write French, so. I have to ask you this, Tony. Why these frames? Why not the traditional frames? What, what led you to select to choose these? Yeah, and I searched out Vatican for many years. I, I always felt that my work needed something balanced in the sense of I, I, a regular frame, a regular storeboard frame or one custom made uh, from a, an average frame maker just didn't, I don't know, I, I, everything is sold as a piece to me. So I believe that this is the masterpiece, the frame and the work together. If you take if you take the image out, that 22 karat gold that you see around, that's 22 karat gold. If you take it out, it looks wonderful, looks beautiful. I think Pamela, you saw two other frames that were just mm -hmm. custom made, and I think you love them as well. But we just have room to put them up, and they still look good. But I feel that this is the completeness of it. And it's a whole different experience, folks. Of course, when you see uh, all of these images together. Um, and what we're going to talk a little bit more about the hanging of the show a little bit later on. Um, number seven is a, a little different, uh, little different perspective. Right. So number seven is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Six. I'm sorry. Okay, this one by the governor's house. Oh, I'm way, I'm way out here. I haven't. I, I'm, I'm listening to you and ignoring my notes. I have a question, number five is next. And I, I am not sure about the title. Is it Governor's House or Maiden? No, this is it, Governor's, Governor's House. Okay. And the reason why it's named Governor's House was this was actually shot in the Governor's House in uh, uh, Snug Harbor, Staten Island, Seattle, Snug Harbor, it's called. And there was a, uh, an abandoned place there and it was called the Governor's House and we rented it for the day. And we went in and we did these photographs. So now this is a image slide. It's different. It's not a regular transfer. If you look closely, you, you would see the uh, texture from the canvas board behind it. And the reason why is of course, basically it is crushed into the canvas board. So basically it's a uh, starts off as a giant decal. Okay, you can buy decal and staples anyway, it's decal paper. You print it out, you have to spray it down three, four, five, six, seven times with uh, triple glaze let it dry. And then what you do is you put it in water and it floats off the back paper and it has to float onto the substrate, whatever that may be. In this case, I chose canvas board, put it on the substrate. Then you have to kind of like crush it in there with a brayer and dry it again and, and spray it again and dry it again. And this is pretty much the final image. So again, these are all one of the one of kind pieces. Like uh, as, with, as you and I spoke about, I couldn't reproduce this again if I wanted to, maybe close to it but there would be something different. You would have either a different thumb mark on it or the, the, the decal would stretch out differently. It just wouldn't be the same, but no two pieces alike. When you and I were t discussing your uh, processes here in the gallery, I, we, we went having a, a short conversation about Polaroid transfers right. um, and the floating of the image. I, I was wondering also, as we move on to uh, number six, which is uh, Beauty Bar, yes. while, while, we're while you're talking about the image, could you maybe tell us a little bit about your influences also, or what was it that led you to this particular series of images? Well, it's not just, it's not just a series of images. All my images are this way. They're all one of a kind pieces. Uh, I, I just never, you know, look, a beautiful image like Susan creates a black and white image is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that rules it all in the end. You know, it, it, it depicts something really beautiful. But for me, I just never wanted to just press print and have an image come out and frame it. I always felt like I had to distort it or twist it or mutilate it in some way, shape or form. <laughs> and uh, it's just my style. It's just, uh, you know, when people see this work, they know who did it. But what led you to this particular um, concept, the subject? Oh, the subject matter. So the beauty bar is a bar here on 14th Street, Manhattan, on second, between uh, First and Second Avenue. It's from the 60s. And again, we rented it out. And I had her, this woman come in and this model. And 
We did the shoot and it's very retro. I just liked it. And, and actually putting this image together, this was, this was one of the most difficult ones to do. It just, just took so long just to manipulate the colors, the backgrounds. Again, it's not done with just Photoshop. It's actually done with your fingertips. And behind it, you can paint the canvas board with acrylic paint using acrylic paint. And then the image, this one's also a decal, uh, an image slide. And this, and then the slide goes over that as well. So there's just so much going on and I just love it. So was this, this group, this group of images, and I know you have many, many more, were these, uh, was it your intention to create a series and exhibit in the beginning that you, you knew you would show all these together? No, I didn't. I, what I did know was that I want the viewer to know that there's just many, many more options than to a regular photograph. And that's, that was, again, that was a, the whole purpose of this, is just to show the viewer that you could take a photograph and you can just do a whole bunch of things with it to make it look really beautiful. Now, this one is a uh, is, is, uh, silver stainless steel background. This is all shot in the governor's house. This is uh, Lex and Maiden, heavy shadows on the wall, all natural sunlight from the uh, window above. And I just thought it was, the look, the subject matter, I mean, just tell such a story. I just think it's great. When you do these uh, leafings and transfers, you'll notice the black border around each of them. If you were to go, you know, later on, go back to them and see them. And the reason why is when you do these transfers, they're so delicate that it's almost impossible to get a sharp edge. You'll see the leafing break apart. I don't know if you ever worked with leafing, but it's almost, it, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. So that black edge kind of hides the, the, the just to interrupt you for just a minute, Tony, uh, when uh, both of you are finished speaking, what we do plan to do too is uh, Paul is going to walk around with the camera so that we can nice. get a little closer and, you know, people can uh, not only see uh, more detail, but also see how the show is hung and how the images work with each other. Number eight uh, is the slide. This slide it is not of the uh, frame that uh, we have here in the gallery right now, but it's it's still beautifully framed. Uh, Lux. Yes, it is. So uh, th this is great. You know, this was this was probably uh, a mistake on my part. Shouldn't have sent it. Of course, I sent it is in a different frame, but you can see the difference in the frame like this and the frame that was made from that again. So this is a perfect example. Again, this is an image slide. It's called Lux. And uh, when you, this is actually an image transfer. It's a direct image transfer, I believe. I don't have, I'd have to go through the paperwork, but I think it's a direct image transfer on this. Uh, no, this is the image slide. This is the image slide. And again, when, when you're using the slide, it, it tends to stretch out. It's, uh, you can manipulate it with your thumbs, very, very important. It could start off small and then you could stretch it into shape into the canvas board, which is what was done here. And it's very difficult keeping the ratios because the model is not distorted. But you can see at the uh, far bottom right, the, the ink stain. So that ink stain is created in Photoshop. And what's the beauty about it is that when you do the slide, you can manipulate that ink stain to actually balance the image. If you were to take that the way, the image would not look as good as it does. So, and this is actually the winning image. Uh, I was just going to say that. Congratulations yes. that this was your winning image. Yeah. Um, the next image, um, we have two more to go here. Um, Lewis, I think, uh, might be a good image for me to ask this particular question. And like, who or what were major influences on your, your photography? Uh, well, when I was in high school, I started working in photography in the yearbook. As most photographers do, they start early on. I had some fantastic teachers in my life, and they all uh, really encouraged me. You know, they when you leave, they said, you know, you should really try to consider a, a career in photography. Although I never did, I became a licensed engineer, and that's what I've been doing now. I'm a licensed engineer for 39 years, but uh, photography has always been in the background, playing, and I've been doing this all that time, and I just love it, and it's my go-to way to relax. This particular image apparently, uh, well, obviously is someone uh, very well known. Yeah, Lewis, everybody knows him. I, I think that this is a, this portrait speaks so perfectly of him. 
Uh, th this is like, I really have to say, it's probably one of the finest portraits I've ever taken. And uh, he's uh, usually hangs outside of B&H photo. Everybody knows him. He hangs out in Dumbo under the Brooklyn Bridge. He gives you a $10 toll wood with that camera. And he's been there forever. Lewis has been this, doing this forever. And this is a, I believe this is on copper, a copper background. Yes, imitation copper you had here on transparency film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imitation copper. Remember, when you use when you use the real thing, you're never going to get the 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 vibrant that. Well, I can't get the vibrant that uh, that I like with the imitation. So it's not a matter of like you know saving seven bucks a sheet. Because you know real gold is fourteen dollars a sheet, where the imitation one is like whatever five. But it, 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 I just can't, it just doesn't give me the look that my work needs. And these frames, these are called Flemish frames, by the way. Again, they're custom made by Vatican and they're called Flemish frames. The other frames were called Tabernacle. Your final image called Flying Tiger right. is very different from the rest. Right, so this is more pop art. You know, it was taken in a uh, airport in Long Island and just, just is just a, uh, a direct image transfer with paper. I mean, most people know it, use a gel medium, put it there, let it dry for 24 hours and you start just wiping it off with water. So you have to make sure it's the image reverse when you're doing this, because when you put the image face down and then you remove just the backing of the image, of course the image is not gonna be on the right side. So you have to print it in reverse using laser paper, a laser jet printer. I use the HP M14, M17. Uh, black and whites, and I use the uh, the R3000 uh, Epsons. That's, that's my equipment that I use to print with. Tony, we'll be asking both you and Susan to be sure and give us links that will be both on our, um, our Facebook page and on our YouTube video. So if people would like to contact you to see more of each of your works or to hear more about your processes, uh, you know, we'll be sure to do that. So before I jump back to Susan, I'm going to ask you now, um, what's happening next? You know, what what do you what are you following this with? What what's your vision for where you so, want to go? I am a, um, I guess most people who know me closely would say I'm a very religious person. I'm a Roman Catholic. So my next project I'm working on is if you're not of this uh, religion, we have what they call confessional boots. So I'm traveling to different churches, you know, 100 churches at 150 years plus, 120 years. They usually have very ornate confessional boots. And I'm gonna to try to do a whole series on that with using uh, real gold, real copper, real platinum. And I wanna to try to maybe, you know, compile 12, 12 images, but beautifully done. You know, sunlight coming in, backlit, I mean, all out. And hopefully uh, that'll work out well. I already started at my church, St. Vincent Ferrer. And I moved on to uh, St. John's the Baptiste, it's all in Manhattan. And then I'll make my way through St. Pat's Cathedral and all the other churches. Oh, keep us posted. Yeah. Uh, Susan, I'm a, thank you very much, Tony. That, uh, I, I, I'm sure we're gonna have more conversations about the process. And uh, uh, please let us know when you're gonna be visiting the gallery so that we can let people know in case they would like to come in and meet you and the same for Susan. Um, as I said, you know, we follow uh, safety, the safety protocol very carefully here. So if you think that you want to arrange for either friends or colleagues uh, to come in, uh, you know, privately, we can arrange that, of course. So Susan, I want to ask you the same question. What's what's next for you? Um, I can't say I have any really definite plans other than to go to Vermont to see my family. And I always spend a lot of time wandering around. I love abandoned buildings and um, there are a couple of places I'd like to get up there and, and see friends in Bennington and all that. That's my, my goal. I would like to try with intent uh, to experiment with intentional camera movement and um, get a little more, maybe take some workshops because um, you know, I, there's always something new to learn in photography. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Terrific. Um, while we're setting up uh, to do a live walk around, um, I, I just want to mention what's happening. Um, 
now in photo photo and what's coming up to and as i said earlier we have been very fortunate that we expanded our gallery and in doing that um, we can have more exhibitions at one time so in addition to susan tiffin being in the front and tony monaco um, as our featured best shop winners right now we also have uh, a group exhibition of photography by 11 of our photo photo gallery artists called Strength and Vision uh, 2. And it is up and we will be having a Zoom reception. I believe it's Thursday, March 18th. And that's going to be an evening Zoom. Uh, so please, you know, check our Facebook page, check back. And um, I have to absolutely be sure to tell you that we are having our best shot, your best shot push pin exhibition in April. Our deadline is April 3rd, and you can see the, um, the incentive to participate is pretty awesome. Uh, two, two people will be chosen as best shot winners, and then a year from now, they will have uh, solo shows here in our gallery. So please participate. The prospectus is on our website. You can access it through Instagram. You can also find it on our Facebook page. So there we go. Okay, now Paul, can you actually get a little bit closer? And folks, if, if you could please uh, give me a little feedback in uh, our chat here if you're able to get a pretty clear shot of this. As I said, uh, <laughs> this is a whole new venue for us, uh, trying to combine both the slides and the live view here. So um, any feedback that you can give us will be greatly appreciated. Uh, this was the first shot of Tony's and uh, uh, called Maiden. Uh, and maybe uh, Paul, if you could just back out a little bit and like pan i'd like for people to be able to see a view of the gallery to see yeah just slowly so you can see yeah that's awesome so that you can see how the pieces are hung um we had a great conversation when we were hanging the work uh yeah it was a, <laughs> it was a long conversation do you have anything to add to that tony <laughs> when we were hanging the work um, Tony's concern, and I certainly felt it was that, you know, we didn't want the, the frames to be overwhelming and to feel um, very heavy. Uh, Tony, are you unmuted? No, muted. Tony? Muted. Can, can you? Muted. Tony? Okay, you got me now. You had me muted. Tony, yeah. can you hear me? I can hear you well. Yes, Hold on one second, you. please. Hello, Tony. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I was just speaking a little bit about the conversations that we had about the work yes. uh, and the hanging process and how, you know, what some of your concerns were about hanging. Uh, so, right. Paul, if you could just uh, get back so we can see a, a, a wider angle of the, the, uh, how the show is actually hung. That would be awesome. Uh, maybe if you could, if you would like, speak to a little bit about um, what we had to consider when the show was being hung. Sure. Of course, the uh, tabernacle frames are more bulkier than the Flemish frames. Whenever you group them together, typically they don't look well. But in this case, uh, you showed me differently. I think they look beautiful. And uh, yeah. So uh, I, I actually learned about hanging on that day. I knew I was going to learn something. And I'm actually going to walk into the shot just so that you can get a little sense of the scale for these, uh, because they're actually pretty, pretty sizable. Um, and you know, a, a lot of thought was given to uh, the spacing between the pieces. We actually left out two pieces because we didn't want to take away from the statement that that these shots, that these particular pieces were making. Uh, Tony, could you also talk about uh, how you're handling any sales? Because um, I know you said you might be working with someone who is uh, possibly to, to recreate these in maybe uh, different frames. 
Right. So unfortunately, the person who made these frames for me right now is reorganizing his business, he's restructuring from the COVID. Uh, so he's not making them right now. So I did locate someone else who was making one for me, and I should have it back in about three weeks to see if they're you know closely related to this. I believe that they will be. So once that happens, then of course I would be able to sell or make any of the projects using the new frames from this other person. Um, but right now, these frames are on hold. Okay, I think folks, well, I, I think um, we're gonna do the same thing for Susan's show, uh, but I, I would, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, if, if you have a question, uh, just if you could just, so that we're not talking over each other and I'll remind myself that, please, if you would like to either ask a question or make a comment, we'd love to hear from you. Sandy? Hi, I just wanted to congratulate Susan and Tony. Your work is magnificent, both of you, so very different, but each spectacular. And Tony, I only had one question for you. Do you shoot digital or on film? I shoot digital. Okay. It's beautiful, both of you. Beautiful work. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, any other questions for either Tony or Susan or the gallery? Oh, how long is the show going to be? Uh, the show is up until, oh, when is it up until? Uh, of all the things, I don't have it in front of me. It's up the, for the month of March. The email flyer said April 3rd. Yes. And then uh, uh, the following show is the Your Best Shot Push Pen Competition. And if you remember, I mean, you talk about jolting this morning when I, you know how those of us who do Facebook a lot and you get your memories, and that memory popped up of my post of closing the gallery. And also, uh, prior to that, it popped up, uh, uh, photos popped up of our reception. And I know some of you were here. It was shoulder to shoulder, inside, outside, food everywhere. It was just a big, huge party celebrating the exhibition. So I can't wait for us to get back to that. And it, it, uh, it heartens me and encourages me to remember that. But that was a year ago. So please, I hope all of you will up, 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 you know, bring in work. Uh, it's $15 per image, up to three images. And we have the drop-off dates listed on Facebook and on our website. Second and third. Uh, we, not framed, no frames. Do Just we need frames. to make an appointment to come see it in person? No, you do not. Our gallery hours are different now. We're open on Thursdays from uh, 12 to 4 p.m. And on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. So no, you do not need to. Okay. Uh, anyone else have any other questions either about the gallery or, yes, please go ahead. Hi, hey, Tom, hi, how are you? Doing well. Uh, Tony, a question for you. Uh, I've been thinking about doing something similar to what you're doing? Do you ever give workshops? If you don't, where did you learn how to do this? Or did, was it just complete trial and error? For me, it was trial and error. I do, uh, I would be willing to give a, a workshop at the gallery. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't want anything for it, but you know, a donation to the gallery would be wonderful. Uh, <laughs> oh, we would love that. Thank you. Great, great question. <laughs> okay, a anybody else? Actually, Tony, it's Paul. I have a question. Over here. Hi, Paul. From start to finish with your process, do you have a vision in mind? Do you know where you want to go when you get to the end and do you know where the end is? Or do you kind of just go until you see what it is that you want? No, absolutely. Uh, it, even before I pick the model, I, I know what the image is going to look like even before I pick the model. Like the model behind you, Elena, her eyes, I knew her eyes had to do a lot of speaking before her mask would be on. Uh, image number one, Pamela. So, you know, Elena has those type of eyes. So that's why I picked her. I knew what the finished image would look like. 
No, so pretty much the image is over before it starts. I do know the process in mind. I do know what I'm looking for. Absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Susan, do you have any questions for Tony or Tony questions for Susan? <laughs> Susan I, I'm I just one. curious, uh, the span of the pictures over a number of years or any concept of the length of time it took you to collect this? No, those photographs that are hanging there were probably done within uh, the last year or two. Yeah, okay. probably the last year or two. Yeah. Could you repeat that, Tony? We had a little new problem there for a moment. Sure. I said the images that are hanging there on the wall were probably done over the last year or two. So uh, it depends. You know, sometimes my job affords me to have more time, and I can go ahead and work on these quicker. But it's uh, not something you rush through, you know. Okay. Um, are there um, are there any specific questions that or anything that you'd like to tell us, either Tony or Susan, that we haven't asked you about that we left off? Yeah. Not really for me. And just to thank you again. Oh. oh. You know. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, then and just talk a little bit about photo, uh, photo Photo Gallery. For those of you who don't know, we're located in downtown Huntington Village um, at 14 West Carver Street. Uh, it originally opened up in 2003 on New York Avenue. And I think we've been in this location probably about eight years. Um, and as I said, because we have an expanded exhibition space now, we are actively seeking creative photographers who um, who are interested in being part of a collective, part of a community. I'm sometimes asked, well, what's the difference between me just showing my work at the library or showing my work, uh, you know, in a competition? The difference is that you become part of the collective. Uh, we have the your best shot exhibition. We have a national competition. We have a phonography competition. We have probably up to eight group uh, shows each year that a, a member can participate in. And we are actively, actively involved in social media. Uh, Eileen uh, most recently has created a photo photo gallery YouTube channel. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, check it out. There are gallery talks there from our national artists uh, and from some of our own artists. You'll find uh, Aranda and Andrea on there, uh, Andrea Gordon and Aranda's sisters. Um, check those out, check out our website. Uh, but it's, it's a community. Uh, everybody pitches in together to make the gallery work, you know, like, if somebody says, ah, oh, you know, that's that's a lot of work to hang a show, that's probably, I don't believe I'm going to say this out loud, but it's it's probably the thing I love to do the most in the gallery is hang a show. I really love it. I love the way when you get finished, it just all comes together and makes a statement. So if you are interested, please uh, go online. Um, we have a... Um, 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 a, a play, excuse me, a link on our website for the membership application and you submit a portfolio. And in these times of COVID where people are still apprehensive about coming to our gallery, we're also looking at, um, we're also looking at digital submissions. Now I'm going to do something right now that I, <laughs> I, I uh, well, I'm just gonna do it, okay? Congratulations, Tom. You are our new listener. Okay. Um, Tom submitted a, a wonderful portfolio. So he doesn't know that yet, but he does now. Thank you. So congratulations. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so that said, uh, folks, we're going to be open today from four to six. If anybody is here nearby and wants to stop by and see the show in person. Uh, and then we are closed on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and we'll reopen on Thursday. So uh, guys, what am, what am I missing here? Anything? 
Uh, uh, Andrea, hi. Oops, you have to unmute, dear. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I can. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to thank Tony and Susan. They really were wonderful presentations and so diverse kinds of work. And I'm glad we got through this. <laughs> okay. And our computer's fun. Last but not least, boy, this was a this sure was a great learning uh, experience today. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be so perfect on our our uh, group uh, Zoom reception. But anyway, as uh, the last thing that I would like to mention is that we are a not for profit, um, and all of our members' dues go solely to paying our rent and our utilities. So if you are so kindly inclined, you could go on our website and there is um, a donation button there if you would like to uh, contribute. Uh, it can be done through pay PayPal. Uh, of course, we always accept uh, checks as well. But you guys have been great. Thank you for hanging in there through our, our bumpy start. Uh, okay, COVID. Tony? Thanks. Yes. Is there anything else that you would like to add or, or, or share before we sign off? No, I'd just like to thank you again, you and Paul, for facilitating this beautiful uh, Zoom meeting and, and just helping me so much with the gallery, hanging the images. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Well, the person, they, you're welcome, but the person who cannot go unthanked here, who is just like a technical wizard in addition to being a fantastic photographer herself <laughs> is Eileen Novak. She, yeah, I mean, she Thank is you, awesome. Eileen. She is the person who does our gallery talks. You know, I, I schmooze. She's the person who takes those videotapes, edits them. Uh, I mean, seriously, they're, they're awesome. So uh, a big thank you goes out to Eileen. Uh, she also um, is a wonderful photographer herself. So you can look at her work online. Um, at Pullstone Studios as well. All right, I think that's a wrap, guys. I think we're done. Thank you, Pamela. Right. Congratulations to Susan and Tony. I'll Thank make a point of reminds you all the great work. You guys take care, be well, stay safe. Thank you so much, Thank you too, as well. Okay. Thank you, guys, and everybody stay safe there. You all stay safe. Be too. safe. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.